now that the crude oil export ban has been lifted uh, on the U.S. side, uh, how will the industry be affected by U.S. producers having the ability to ship unrefined crude uh, straight from the Bakken, Permian, et cetera, to uh, Europe or Asian customers? Okay, what it does is it's good, it's will reduce the penalty that U.S. US producers have been paying for being productive. So, so it helps U.S. E&Ps. But it also reduces the price signals and the cash flows to add more jobs here to transform that crude into higher value product exports. But uh, the, the other thing is it's going to reduce price volatility because the U.S. supply is going to be a much more steady supply. And, and therefore, when there are disruptions in the rest of the world, just like the ones we've had this, this century, they, they won't be as large a share of the total flow as they have been in the past. So, so there's a, a net improvement to the producers, not as much improvement to, uh, in incentives to adding more value by adding more refining and, and all that activity here to export a lot more overseas. So, so what do you think the, um, just following up on that, what do you think the effect to the uh, downstream side here in the U.S., the refiners, what's, what's that, how's it going to affect them? Well, there's, the big shortage right now is indeed refining. You know, the, the world's demand has caught up to worldwide refining capacity, which is why we, we've, we're now seeing uh, the highest refining margins for gasoline we've ever seen seasonally. So, so there's just a, a big um, signal that says you need more refining capacity. It's being driven by vehicles. The world is, is producing and purchasing and using more vehicles than ever before. So, so there's a big need. There will continue to be a big need for refining capacity. Uh, and it's simply there won't be as big an incentive to build it here as there has been the last couple of years with the big disparity between what uh, U.S. crude oil producers received and, and what the rest of the world received. But it's still, there's going to be a lot of incentives to add refineries here in the United States. Refining capacity doesn't necessarily have to be new new refineries in new locations. Uh, but we also need as a country to realize there's huge, huge benefits to, to making things work. And, and so there's, there's a big opportunity. We won't be working at it quite as, as readily with the exports. Talking about natural gas for a minute, uh, what does $2.50 uh, per MCF gas price do for the U.S.? Okay, first, 250 natural gas, it fuels much more production of prosperity. Uh, it just allows a whole lot more to be fueled, to be energized by natural gas. Uh, but I believe that gas demand, what it'll do is pr produce more natural gas demand than I believe a 250 price can supply. We've got to remember that 250 is only equivalent to $15 per barrel. So it's producing exceptionally low cost plastic, fertilizer, and electricity. And these are major ingredients for producing much more prosperity for the hundreds of millions of people in the world who'd like to move up to living better lives. So, so while it, it does a, a nice nice job of, of keeping our economy growing and growing it faster. I, I just don't see how you can sustain the growth meeting all that additional demand at that price. Right. What's the state of the global LNG markets and, and what do you think the, how's the U.S. going to affect that if, once we start exporting? Okay, there, there's been a, a frenzy to bring more LNG capacity in place, particularly here in the United States. And, and what I see ready to take place is a switch from that frenzy to actually prospering many more, both suppliers who are going to be able to flow gas uh, out of the country through LNG, but, also, but especially the consumers are going to be able to get the, the additional LNG. We've had several LNG frenzies, beginning with the effort decades ago to bring Algerian LNG to the U.S. back in the 1970s. And $100 plus oil... LNG priced relative to oil, and, and more recognizing that dirty coal isn't really a good idea, they've created that frenzy over the past couple of years that now soon we'll have a lot more LNG capability in place to, to actually power up a whole lot more, to power up hundreds of millions more people in the world. So 
rather than a frenzy to try to get capacity, we're switching to where we're going to see a lot more of the gas moving to places and in, in producing better lives. And gas is rapidly beginning to move ahead to take the, it'll eventually probably take the place of coal as U.S. primary fuel for electricity generation. Um, what what is the uh, the primary cause of this happening? Do you think it's expensive regulation and anti greenhouse gas regulations on coal power plants, or is it the fact that natural gas is cheap fuel? Okay, natural natural gas has already taken the lead from coal in the latest months. So so natural gas is now generating the the largest share of of electricity. Now I find that most are crediting this change to the idea that coal is politically correct, that's awful stuff, we should get rid of it. Uh, and that's despite people living longer and, and most of the electricity generated in our lifetimes being generated by coal. Uh, so I most credit this switch to the coal plants being high wear and tear and they're old. They're, they're really at the end of their useful lives without hundreds of millions of dollars more of major investment to give them another 10, 15, 20 years of life. So that coupled with the incredible technology gains for natural gas, so, so both technology gains to have it be produced easier, but also the technology gains on the power plant side. Uh, today's combined cycle power plants, they're so much more efficient than the uh, simple cycle plants that existed decades ago. So, so there's technology and then just exhaustion of, of the coal plant life that are making natural gas be the fuel that will generate most of the electricity the rest of our lives. And because we have such a huge uh, natural gas base, natural gas just is going to be the electricity generation source here in the United States, here in, in really in North America, fueling uh, a wonderful export platform of the United States, Canada, and Mexico. The strategy now seems to be attack the permitting of new pipelines that carry oil and natural gas as a way to stop fossil fuel development. Where do you think this is going to lead? So it's the stored solar energy of fossil fuels that strike me as a much easier, much many fewer side effects because we've already gone through most of them, gone through many of them, that is going to fuel the hundreds of millions more people in the world who want to live upward mobility lifestyles and who will do it because the energy is there. The energy can be used. Which presidential candidate on any ticket gives the oil and gas industry the best chance to prosper, in your view? Okay, I haven't looked at any of the candidates from an energy policy standpoint. But what I see is there's, there's a whole lot of restrictions. You know, we hear often about the United States doesn't have an energy policy. In reality, we do have a lot of energy policies, uh, and, and most of it is, you know, let freedom ring. And that, to me, that's the best policy is let's, let's pursue everything to find out what works and works best in all kinds of locations. But I've been struck for, for a very long time Drilling in Lake Erie has gone on since the 1950s. There are thousands of wells in Lake Erie. They're all on the Canadian side. We have a policy that says Americans can't possibly drill safely in Lake Erie. And when I look at the Atlantic Ocean and all the coastlines of all the countries, the one country that sticks out as thou shalt not drill on the, the Atlantic coast of the country is the United States. So, so there's some real opportunities to increase freedom and allow many more people to learn to, to do be and have better, live better lives by figuring out what needs to be done and doing it. And, and then use the energy that, that is readily available to make it all happen.